We are getting started early this morning because it is planting season. So let's get this outfilling opened up. We can work before the sun comes up because we need to. Yeah, basically every single spot that can open, let's get it open. We've got a long, long day ahead of us, so we are going to get started. So Lori and I are here. It is not light outside yet, <laughs> but we've got the outbuilding and we've got light. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna be planting a few trees today. We're gonna be bringing you guys along with for some, not all, but some. So first thing we need to do is we need to make sure all of these trees that we're planting are more bush type trees. So we need to make sure that the protection from the rabbits uh, is a little bit taller and more extensive. So we're gonna get some three foot hardware cloth, get it cut into circles attached with hog rings. Uh, Lori, you ready to get to work? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> She's excited, let's do this. We've got the tractor loaded up. You know, I have always watched homesteading videos and laughed when people would load up their tractor bucket with all their tools and supplies that they needed. And guess what? It's exactly what I'm doing because it's very efficient. <laughs> so we got all that stuff together. The first trees we're gonna be planting are two figs. So I need to fire up the tractor, head back to the back of the Eastern orchard where we're gonna place these two figs here with you guys this morning. So we are back here where we're gonna have these two figs for reference. The farmhouse is back there, and these are the rest of our fig trees. So before we get to planting, I wanna show you guys something. We've had a couple comments when it comes to rabbits and trees and attacking our trees, and I had a few of you guys insisting that rabbits don't mess with figs, but I know they do, and here's another example. So that would be a freshly cut <laughs> fig leaf we found it right here, so they basically bit it, uh, bit the tip off of there. So I guess if nothing else, um, maybe they're helping us prune. <laughs> but uh, they do definitely go after the figs. Now they didn't eat these leaves. I did see one yesterday uh, that the branch was actually eaten off, and I couldn't find the branch. So I'm assuming that one ate it. Uh, either way, we've got sun coming up. That's right there. You can see it's just peeking up above there. Uh, Lori's bundled up because it's a little bit chilly this morning. Honey, are you okay? I'm cold. <laughs> You're cold. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to be planting, we've got the auger and the rest of our supplies here to go ahead and start digging. I have this plant down here. That is a Violet de Bardot fig. We actually have that gifted to us. And Victoria, thank you so much. We were able to root that one out and we are going to be planting it back here. Uh, for reference, we have the fencing that comes across the property to block off what will be the cattle acreage behind us. We are butted up right against that. This tree is more of a smaller uh, fig tree, so we're gonna get that closer to where we have the fencing. And we'll walk over here. This is a tree that I picked up last week from Richard's Garden Center. You'll see it down there. That is a, an Olympia or Olympian fig. So we're going to put that right here as well to get a couple more figs uh, here in our fig collection. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We've got a lot of planting to do today.
We have uh, the Olympia right here and give you an idea of the size of the ring that we're looking at. It's, uh, it's pretty extensive. We're gonna test the irrigation here in just a second. Right over here, you can see there we have the, the Violet de Bardot. And Lori was kind enough to take the tractor and get some wood chips. So we've got, uh, I showed you this guys, I showed this to you guys on the vlogs a couple times, a spigot that's in ground so nothing can get to it and we can tap into it when we need it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a hose so we can saturate these real well. Uh, timing wise, we do irrigate tonight, but we're gonna test the irrigation. So again, an advantage to having that Wi-Fi controller that's 200 yards away, I can turn it on and we can test it out here. So we're gonna wrap these two up. These were the difficult ones today. We wanted to knock these out first, so I'm a little out of breath, um, but these look really good. So we'll take another shot here uh, once we're done. So we have the first two trees in the ground for today. Still have a few to go, but I wanted to give you guys a look at how these look in the end. So we did put a lot more wood chips down on these. We're testing out a few different ways of doing the wood chips around the irrigation ditches that we're creating to try to keep wild animals away from the ditches. So covered these this time with wood chips and I think we're gonna be in good shape. But you can see the Violet de Bardot looks real happy there on the corner. Uh, we did that on purpose because we will have tractor traffic coming through there. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't have anything too, too big. And we'll see. The theory is those stay nice and small and controlled. Let's see if we can uh, break that assumption. And then, of course, we watered them in very, very heavily. So these look really good. Now we need to get some breakfast. So Lori and I are going to break for breakfast. But before we do, Lori was over here at the Blackjack Fig as I was getting some supplies and the tractor. And we knew we had some figlets on here, but she found an almost ripe fig. It's pretty soft. It's not quite droopy yet. Now, what we do know about these fall figs, especially on this particular variety, is they don't really ripen up all that well. I'm assuming it's just the dry air temperature or just the fact that I want to pick this one. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pick it. Oh, look at that, you guys. The first fig on the farm. Does have an open eye, a lot like the brown turkey figs do. Let's open it up. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh wow, actually, it's pretty juicy. Oh man, that looks really good. Check that out. So not near as dark. You can see it's pretty light. Still definitely a little unripe. But again, we do notice that, especially the October figs, have a tendency to not ripen up all that good for us. But you know what? <laughs> I'm hungry, it's breakfast time. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Oh, that's... Okay, so I don't know if it's just because this is the very first fig on this farm or because this actually tastes really good. So I have to leave the other half for Lori. Sorry, I can't share with you guys, but I'm definitely getting my half. That's for sure. All right. Lori and I have breakfast to make. She has the other half of this fig to eat. We'll come back to you up at the front because we have some tropicals that we're gonna plant with you guys today. As I was saying in yesterday's vlog, we're here at the front of the house. We have four other trees behind Lori that we're not gonna do today. We're gonna do a separate video on those. But these are gonna be trees that are going into 
kind of test. So what we have here is we have a pineapple guava. We had a pineapple guava on the old property. This one will be just fine. We got down to 20 degrees there and it muscled right through it. So not worried about this one at all. We know it'll do well. Whether or not we get fruit, not too sure yet. Next would be a strawberry guava. So the strawberry guava we actually had on our very first property when we were living in Phoenix. And it did okay. Uh, survived a couple of cold winters without a problem, but we had it up against a block fence in a pot. So now we have it in the ground out here in the open. So we'll see how that one does. Then last but not least, we have a pink guava. The pink guava we've never grown before. So that's gonna be a test for us as well. Now we still have a couple more spots. So we do have two more trees. We're gonna be looking for a white guava in the spring. And I'll explain that in a second. And we'll be looking for a bay leaf tree, which we wanna put right in the corner, which hopefully we'll pick up here in the next week or two. So back to what we're gonna be planting today. Now we already knew the pineapple guava was going here and we would put it in in the fall. What we didn't know was that we were gonna be picking up a couple of these true tropicals in the pink guava and the strawberry guava. So typically we would not plant those right now. We're going into the most difficult part of the year for them and that's our winter times. So we would typically plant those in the spring. However, we got these from Lowe's with the, with the pineapple and Home Depot with the other two guavas. So their return policy is pretty liberal when it comes to fruit trees. So Lori and I figured, you know what? We're here, we're planting. Let's give it a shot and see if we can get these things through the winter. If we can, they get a jump start on that spring flush and then that spring, summer, fall growth next year. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get to planting. Now, one thing we're gonna do here a little bit differently, you'll see I have my irrigation head right here. Now we're gonna be doing different type, a different type of irrigation here. We're actually gonna be doing drip irrigation and that's predominantly because we didn't have all of these trees planned originally and we are limited on the amount of water flow we can get through this. So we're gonna be utilizing drip irrigation for these trees. So we're gonna put a multi head on here that we can have multiple quarter inch drip lines coming out of. I'm gonna run it along the back there all together and then come out to each tree from the back side. That way we know where the irrigation is. So the first thing we actually need to do is get the irrigation run and then we'll get to planting these trees. basically have our trenching done. We're not gonna actually dig in the ground to put these quarter inch strip lines down. We're just keeping them away from the ground squirrels or gophers as best we can. So you can see the head, if Lori slides in, this is the head that we're gonna be using for our drip lines. So we're gonna have five lines total running across and then one that's still capped. Uh, so we'll have one line going right over to this first tree, which is the pineapple guava. And then we'll run the rest of these lines together down there and then tee off one at a time as we need them. So Lori and I are gonna go ahead and get to running all of our irrigation. One thing I should mention, what we're gonna be using is two, two gallon per hour emitters on each one of these trees so we can spread out how we're watering across a wider area to allow these trees to eventually grow into each other and have plenty of space for root growth. to show you how this is set up. Flory slides in, you'll see we have all of our connections made. We already tested out the system. We know that it works fine. The rocks, by the way, you wanna keep those rocks in there. And the reason being is that actually keeps gophers and ground squirrels from getting in there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our holes dug. Nothing special when it comes to planting these. We plant them right into the natural soil, that wood chip mulch and all that'll be uh, what actually creates the soil for these trees to continue to grow out. We will be adding fish emulsion, about a tablespoon of that and about a tablespoon of vitamin B1 into about two gallons of water per tree. And we will saturate the whole, 
the area once we're filling in the hole and then the area surrounding the outside of it as we plant each one of these. This will kind of give you a shot of what that looks like completed. Hopefully you can see the pineapple guava. I'm not sure if you can or not. And then the rest of that row, and maybe a better angle over here, but just uh, really wanted to, more than anything, and that looks pretty good right there, so you can kind of see those. So obviously, this is the front of the house. We've still got one more to plant, plus the bay leaf tree, which does get to a pretty good size, and it's all evergreens up here. And then of course, with the guava, one thing I forgot to mention is it because it's close to the house, it'd be very easy for us to protect these during the winter time if we want to take that step. <laughs> we tend to be kind of lazy with that. Either way, there's one more thing we want to get planted with you guys today and it's out back. Last thing on the agenda for today would be the triple crown blackberry. So this is one that we took as a pup from the old property and I'll try to find the video and link it for you guys here where we actually were creating soil. So this will be our first test to see what the soil looks like underneath here. Now we still have blackberries coming, so this isn't the last of our planting for blackberries. We ordered a couple different varieties off of Rain Tree. One of them is a Primark variety and a couple other ones that we're gonna be planting here as soon as we get those. But we wanna get this in the ground because this one's actually doing very, very good in that pot and we wanna go ahead and get it in the ground now figure we're hand wandering here anyway. Now as far as that soil and what it's going to look like, if I look over here to that sweet potato bed, it makes me not too concerned that we're going to have an issue with the soil in this bed. I think we're going to be just fine. So it's getting warm. Lori and I want to grab some lunch, but we want to get this planted with you guys before we do that. So let's go ahead and get to it. So I had Lori come over a little bit closer and the reason why is the worms that we're finding just pulling these wood chips back. They're all over. I'm just gonna grab a few. It's kind of hard to make out, but we've got small little red wigglers there. You can see I've got four of them in my hand. That is exactly what we wanted to see. This is right where we had that compost. So we only had a couple inches of wood chips to pull back and we started hitting just this really, really nice soil right here. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. So I wanna make sure we get these guys covered up again and get this planted. So we're gonna get back to work, but I wanted to show you that. I'm hoping that you can actually pick this up on camera, but just the way this soil looks, it looks like we amended it. So it looks like you've got some compost amendment in here and the soil just looks totally different from the rest of the property. And got that water, it's starting to sink in already and just looks beautiful. So now we do have a, a really short cage. You can hopefully pick this up on camera. Uh, here that I think will for the most part keep the bunnies away, but I just want to make sure So we've got kind of just a couple that we put together that should keep the small bunnies away I don't think we're gonna have a problem I already have a little pup growing in there and one thing about this triple crown blackberry It sends out runners like crazy So it will be the only blackberry in this bed and eventually give it time assuming it does well It will completely overtake this bed and probably <laughs> go outside of the bed so we're gonna go ahead and get this covered with wood chips and then I think that's gonna do it for the planting that we've gotta to try to get done today. We got that planted. So the only thing we didn't get to today, which is okay, we weren't sure whether or not we would, were those four trees that I got last week. 
But we're gonna try to get those in the ground tomorrow so we can get that video up, hopefully for you guys next week. I think you guys will like that one. Uh, we're looking forward to those trees. So one of the things that I promised that I would give you guys was an update over here on the pasture, which is where I'm headed. And man, is it looking good. So you can see it's greening up really, really well. We got a lot of the different things coming up, at least as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know how to make out alfalfa, but I'm assuming there's some down here. But a few things that I know I definitely can see yeah, as we come in closer here, hopefully you guys can pick this up. But I do know that I've got some radish coming up in here in several spots it looks like. I'm really excited about the daikon coming in. Uh, I know I definitely have some clover coming in here. I can see that it's real small. Uh, but that uh, I can definitely see. And then of course the grass. So you can see this here. This is the rye grass that's coming in. And then in several areas over the pasture, I could see that we have some of the cereal grass from the straw coming in as well. So definitely really excited to see this. I was really excited, especially of all the radish to see that coming up. Uh, that is really exciting to get that mining root in there that we can use to help with, uh, with the pasture. So, okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and call it for the morning stuff. I think we're right about noon and uh, Lori and I are hungry and it's uh, still warm. It's not as warm as it was, but uh, I think we're still gonna hit about 90 degrees today and it's feeling like it's about that now. I think that's gonna wrap for today. We have a lot of planting we still need to get done tomorrow. We've got those four trees right over there that we're gonna be putting right next to Lori here. We're actually gonna be able to finalize a few spots up here, which I think is great. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guavas do. Really excited to have guavas here on the farm and have these evergreens up front. You know, we're here, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. We're in the 90 degree range. These are newly planted trees and there's a little bit of droop in the leaves here on the pink guava but for the most part, they actually look very, very good. So I think we picked the right day to get these in the ground. Either way, I'm really excited to see how these are gonna do for us. So just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there. You won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, we'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here and our Healthy Farm Living channel. We refer to it as HFL. I'll leave a link down below as well. That's where we talk about all things that we do to keep us healthy in and around the farm. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.